All right, welcome. Uh, this video is gonna go over how to sketch a demand curve from a demand function. So I'm gonna go through these two examples here, one with relatively small numbers for the demand function and one for uh, slightly bigger numbers for the demand function. The process is gonna be the same, but um, we'll go through it with those two numbers typically because those are examples of numbers that will show up in your homework and exams. So uh, step one, is going to be to create the graph. Remember to put quantity on the x axis and price on the y axis. Uh, the trick here is going to be to figure out where the intercept is going to occur on that price axis. The trick here is to remember that the intercept is going to occur where quantity equals zero. So what you can do here is find that at quantity equals zero, what does P have to be? And we can see pretty quickly that if P is 10, 10 times two equals 20, 20 minus 20 equals zero, price has to be equal to 10. And so we know that this demand curve is going to intersect the uh, price axes at a value of 10. Now we figure out where the demand curve is going to intersect the x-axis or the quantity axis. If p equals zero, quantity is gonna be equal to 20. And so we can just draw a straight line because we know it's a linear relationship between those two points. Now, for example, maybe uh, you have to solve for some points in between the two intercepts. So what we could do is look at maybe the middle point. So at a price of five, what would Q end up being? So we could imagine that price is five. Five times two gives us 10. 20 minus 10 gives us 10. So we would expect a Q value of 10. And we could repeat this process uh, for any value. So if we wanted a price of three, what would the Q end up being? Well, we plug three in here, we get six, 20 minus six is 14, okay. Uh, now imagine that you're given a Q value of seven. You plug in seven, or I'm sorry, you get a Q value of seven here. You now have to solve for P, 20 minus two times what gives you seven. This is gonna be, end up being 6.5. So you could imagine 6.5 times 2 is 13. 20 minus 13 gives us this Q of 7. So this is how you can sketch a demand curve given a demand function. Let's do it for this second example here. Uh, if we start with the intercept on the quantity axis, you can see that if p equals zero, we'll get an intercept of 10,000. Now we have to figure out what p is going to be, so imagine that q equals zero. Okay, what times 500 is going to give us 10,000? So if we multiply this by two, we'll get 1,000, and we need 10 of them, so p is actually going to end up being 20. So at a price of 20, we would expect quantity to be equal to zero. And then we can connect those lines and we will get our second demand curve. Okay, just to clarify or to support that 500 times 20 equals 10,000, you can see that if price is equal to 20, and for every dollar increase in price, quantity is going to go down by 500. You would see that we would only need to increase that 20 times in order to get 10,000, and quantity would end up being zero. So that's why it's our intercept. We could then go through the same process as before. We could plug in a random price, plug in our random price to our demand function. So if we choose a price of 10, what would quantity end up being? Well, 500 times 10 gives us 5,000. 
So we would end up seeing a quantity of 5,000. So you could rece repeat this process uh, for any of the values. Just choose any random P, try to figure out what quantity demanded will be. You can use your demand function right there. So uh, the trick here is to basically use your demand function to plug in those values and that will allow you to sketch the curve. If you are struggling with this, one alternative is to create a table. If you're just struggling with uh, the algebra and the math, what you can do here is plug in for a bunch of different values to try to help you out. So you can go back to this function here, maybe plug in a Q equals zero. So if Q equals zero, what does P have to be? Well, we solved it earlier you can plug it in there. Now for example, uh, q equals 1. Okay, if q equals 1, what does p have to be? Uh, we can see if we go through the algebra and solve it, it has to be 9.5. Then we could go through a q of 2. What does p have to be? Well, it has to be 9, and so on and so forth. You could create this table or demand schedule to also help you solve the problems. So if you feel comfortable doing the algebra and sketching the graph, you can skip that step. But if you're not comfortable or you just want to confirm that you did everything accurately, uh, this also lets you see if the values are going in the right direction. Make sure you're doing it correct.